with prosecutor Renato Mariotti and Vanity Fair's Molly John Fast. Uh, Molly, here we are at the table. Um, I mentioned that you can only learn about these things sort of as they go. Right. Um, Cohen and Stormy are being almost held as the closer to a case that by the time you get to your closers, you better have made a lot of the case. What, what do you think about that strategy from the DA side, the story they're telling through the receipts? As I remind people, we have plenty of lawyers around, um, but you, a storyteller for one of our venerated <laughs> magazines, um, know a thing or two about putting a story together, and, and the order matters. Right. The order matters, and remember, the big problem with this case is Michael Cohen, right, that he may or may not be a sort of a witness. He's just not as good a witness as someone like David Pecker. And I think David Pecker has been meticulous and not emotional. You know, he's gone through the story in a very clear way, and then they've backed, at every point, they've backed it up with documents. And I think a lot of people have watched this this trial and been really pleasantly surprised with just how organized and and methodical the case they're making is and that these more salacious characters like Michael and Stormy are coming in later and and more for color and less for the yeah. actual mechanics of the case. Yeah. And, and Renato, I want to mention something that'll be no surprise to you, um, but I didn't get a time to mention it yesterday when I was in court in our coverage. Um, in court yesterday, we, everyone in court, including most importantly the jurors, spent over an hour staring at a screen with this log of texts, and it was zoomed out so you couldn't make out any individual one, but I'm talking about like over 15 texts in like a row. And then they would zoom in on one and come out and zoom in on another. And the experience, Renato, if you were not super interested in the, in the content, might be like the, you know, the worst uh, accountant internship you've ever gotten. Um, but it felt like not only in substance, but in tone, Renato, they were trying to show the jury, as I mentioned in our open, we've got this all. Anyone coming in to talk about it is just reconfirming and explaining what we have in the text receipts. You, you know what was so important about those receipts, uh, Ari, is it shows how Donald Trump is in the thick of everything. Hmm. You know, one defense you could have, right, if you were a defendant here is, Hey, I was running for president. I was a rich guy at all these businesses. I wasn't focused on this. This wasn't important to me. There's no way you can make that uh, defense here because they have the receipts that show he was intimately involved. You, you had shown something a moment ago where Michael Cohen's like, I can't reach him. Yeah. This is a guy who's literally running for president, and his lawyer is trying to reach him in the middle of all that to discuss the, this issue, this hush money scheme in the midst of that campaign for president. He was involved. He was hands-on. This was his scheme. That's really what the prosecution is showing through those text messages. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and Molly, take a listen to how D.A. Bragg, in his uh, very rare public comments announcing the indictment, um, spoke about how it came down to a paper trail, uh, receipts, wires, texts, um, with Cohen involved. Less than two weeks before the presidential election, Michael Cohen wired $130,000 to Stormy Daniels' lawyer. That payment was to hide damaging information from the voting public. The scheme violated New York election law. Straightforward is in their view. Right. And what was crucial and critical, and they got right away, which I think was so important, this was not about protecting Melania. And the defense mm. wants you to think this is about Trump protecting his family, but we know and that's what Pecker spoke to, that he knew that this was about the campaign, that the Access Hollywood tape had come out, and they were worried that these two other allegations would sink his campaign. Yeah. Uh, and Renato, again, we don't make the news, we report on it, and, and the parts that are dry are dry. Uh, Politico also uh, had a, a kind of a similar observation about the Davidson testimony yesterday. I'll read that to you. Um, while there are colorful claims at the core... Davidson, that's the lawyer for Daniels and McDougal, had a presentation that was cautious and calculated. In other words, lawyerly. For prosecutors, his staid recollection may be a welcome contrast to another witness who's all but certain to testify against Trump, former fixer Cohen, who arranged the deals and uh, who Molly, uh, myself, and the DA in the soundbite just referenced. Um, do you share that assessment or what do you think? I agree. And that's why these are our early witnesses. You know, Molly was talking a moment ago about how to put together a story. 
it, you know, as a trial lawyer, I think of it as like putting on a play. And these are my actors and actresses that I'm putting on essentially to set a stage. And in the beginning, you want to have your more staid, your more careful witnesses. You don't want the first impression from the jury to be something wild and crazy. You want them to see the evidence that's being built. And Davidson had some some really key testimony. You know, he was talking about, for example, how Trump understood from the very beginning that it was going to be these companies that were going to be footing the bill, ultimately showing the tying, tying this together to the false statements and business records that are really core to the charges here for the uh, district yeah. attorney.